Now, our next guest tracks daily short selling data, and he says investors are betting against UK retail companies as a sluggish economy hits spending. But what does that mean for property companies that own much of Britain's high streets? Well, let's find out. We're joined by Will Duff Gordon, research director at Data Explorers. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, in terms of what we're seeing for a lot of these real estates, is there as much shorting as we could expect? No, there isn't, and we're seeing this morning kind of good results from um, the main land, land securities, securities, British Land, Hammerson, yeah. etc. Uh, so investors are are definitely not thinking that those companies are in any trouble at all, which is um, a tiny bit surprising given that how important obviously retail are as tenants to all of these things. Obviously, they rent to offices, uh, but also retail. There's one exception: um, Great good. Portland Estates, yeah. not a huge short position, uh, and they're possibly victims of their success because their share price has gone up so far, um, and they've had such a good run. People maybe think that their next step is downwards. So six and a half percent of their shares are short, but they're the only ones. A little bit of an increase in, say, Shaftesbury, but the rest investors are not being bearish. And well, this is very different to what you're actually seeing in the, in the retail. Yeah, eight sector. of the top ten biggest shorts in the UK are uh, the poor retail firms: uh, Dixons, uh, Home Retail, Kayser Electricals, etc. Um, so definitely, people thinking that time is tough there as they compete with the online retailers. But these property companies, I mean, why is there no short selling? I know you say it's a surprise. It was a surprise to you. As well. well, they're so exposed to what's going on. They are, and obviously some more exposed than others. I remember in 2008, these were very heavily shorted because uh, mm -hmm. they were quite leveraged. Um, they are you know, less leveraged now. Some are trading today at a slight discount to their net asset value. Great Portland Estates is at, a, is at about 20% premium to its net asset value. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of things to look at here. Uh -huh. And is this trend going to continue? I mean, have you ever seen, for example, not a lot of short selling because they're just waiting for to, to have a clearer picture, or are they just uh, not interested course. at the moment? They could just be, uh, 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 you know, they could be wrong, um, or they could be they could be right for avoiding it today. They're completely right because all the property companies are, are soaring. So it's definitely one to watch, and we'll look at for the the increases and see whether Great Portland Estates is the, is the sort of first of many that gets shorted. Yeah, and of course, if you want to have more, and you do have a Bloomberg terminal, you can do on DXPL to see any other short selling. Now, talk to me about autonomy, Will, because this is something where you've seen quite a lot of activity on. There's some, definitely some short sellers out there who are determined that autonomy um, is going to uh, sort of run into trouble at some point. Um, quite a big short position emerged a few months ago, went to about 11% of the company. Mm -hmm. They've actually mm -hmm. given up already. It's come down to 7.5%. Remember that the average for the FTSE is about 1% to 2%. So it's still a huge short position, but it's definitely coming down. I think they announced they were buying Iron Mountain yesterday. Uh, but certainly autonomy is a sort of Marmite company in the sense some people love it, some people hate it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Will Duff Gordon.